Hey guys, welcome to the PoolmanUniversity.com videos, a member of the Pool Nation family. Today we're talking to Bob Lowry, founder of Pool Chemistry Training Institute. And in this video, down in the description below, we're going to be showing the dates that Bob is going to be doing his next certification. So you're going to want to look at that. We'll talk about that a little bit. Bob, how are you doing? Hey, good morning from Lima, Peru. How are you all? We're excited, excited to have you on and excited to continue to do these videos on water chemistry education, Bob. So, Bob, here's the first question that I have for you, and that is, what is perfect water condition? Ah, well, you know, once in a while I get asked that question, and, and I suppose the answer is there's no perfect water, but, um, but we can shoot for... Uh, what is best. And we teach this in our class at the Pool Chemistry Training Institute. The class is called Pool Chemistry Certification Dash Residential. And we certify people for three years in pool chemistry. But what we shoot for, the goal is to make stable and safe water. And so um, we can have uh, water that, that is perfect with different conditions, but um, the goal as a service tech is to make water that's stable and safe. And so um, one of the things that we do to accomplish this is to, to replace the current standards that you're using that are ranges and go from ranges to a system of targets. And the targets are a, a specific number for each water condition. And this makes it much, much easier to understand if a pool is in balance or not. And the reason is that everything has one number. And it then makes it easy to understand if it's in or out of, of, of target. And so if you have a, a for instance, the pH uh, range with the PHTA guidelines, is a, a minimum level of 7.2, an ideal level of 7.4 to 7.6, and a maximum level of 7.8. So if you have a pH of 7.3, where is that? It's in between minimum and ideal. So is that low or okay, or what is that? So even the guideline doesn't give you any, any information about whether that's okay or not. But if I told you that, the target for pH was 7.5, then you would know instantly that 7.3 is low. And so does everybody on the planet. So we set up a system of targets that creates a, a perfect condition in the water. And you can be slightly off of either of those, but the goal is to make it stable. So we use, uh, we make a, a pH stable by, by shooting for 7.5, but then, we use three buffering systems in the pool. And there are three buffering systems in the pool. One is the alkalinity itself. The other is cyanuric acid. And those two buffers, even though we don't think of them normally as buffers, those two buffers prevent the pH from going down. So the right levels for total alkalinity is, a, is 90 parts per million. And cyanuric acid is 50 parts per million. So keeping those at those levels will keep the pH from going down. Then we can add a third buffer to the pool. If you're not already using it, it's a great idea to use. It's called borate. And specifically, you can either add boric acid or sodium tetraborate and a hydrate. And by adding that to the water at 50 parts per million, we prevent or keep the pH from going up. It doesn't prevent it completely from going up, but it slows it down. And in a lot of cases actually does prevent it from going any, any higher. So we, we use two buffers to prevent the pH from going down and another buffer to keep it from going up. By having those three buffers in the right range, we keep pH and alkalinity from moving. Then we can, we can use a type of chlorine that doesn't increase cyanuric acid because as cyanuric acid increases, we have to increase the free chlorine level to match the cyanuric acid level. And so um, 
if we're using a type of fluorine like trichlor that continually raises the cyanuric acid, we're going to have to add more fluorine as the cyanuric acid level builds up. So um, if we use uh, liquid fluorine or calcium hypochlorite, it doesn't raise the pH of the pool and it also doesn't raise the cyanuric acid. So this is a good thing. The liquid chlorine for years, it was thought that, that liquid chlorine raises the pH of the pool. And while I would agree that it has a pH of between 11 and 13, so when you pour it in a pool, it does raise the pH. But we didn't think about what happens after we make the chlorine. So when you put liquid chlorine or cal hypo in the pool, it makes sodium hypochlorite. And that sodium hypochlorite raises the pH. And so it is, so I'm sorry, I said sodium, sodium hypochlorite. Sodium hypochlorite does not raise, it raises the pH by making sodium hydroxide, which we call lye or drain cleaner. So the sodium hydroxide that's in the product uh, raises the pH of the pool, but it also makes uh, hypochlorous acid in the pool which we call HOCl. So HOCl is in the pool, and that's the killing form of chlorine. So it kills bacteria, kills algae, and it gets degraded by sunlight, even with some cyanuric acid in the water. So when it degrades from being HOCl, it drops the oxygen, and it makes HCl. HCl is hydrochloric acid. We also call it muriatic acid. So we make sodium hydroxide today, and we make uh, hydrochloric acid tomorrow. And the two make enough to cancel each other out, exactly. So uh, the net change to pH by adding liquid chlorine is nothing. So the pH doesn't change when you use liquid chlorine. The cyanuric acid doesn't go up. So we're, we're, we're making the pool stable by using buffers to keep the pH from going up or down keeping them in the proper level. We're using borate to keep the pH. We're using a chlorine that doesn't raise or lower the pH or the cyanuric acid. So we have, uh, we have made a stable situation in the pool so that only a little bit of minor change is gonna happen from one week to the next. And so this is a, an important way to keep a pool. And we teach this in our classes and it's a little more expanded than I just told you about in five minutes, but um, we teach this in our classes and um, you, can, you can definitely use this information that's in the class. You can go out to your pools and start using it the next day. Um, I guess we didn't actually talk about calcium and, and TDS, but uh, the calcium level in the pool should be 350 parts per million as a target if you have a a plaster pool, or as a friend of mine coined the term, a cementitious pool. And so um, anything that has concrete or cement in it, uh, it's 350 parts per million. If it's anything other than a cementitious uh, surface, which would be vinyl, fiberglass, acrylic, plastic, uh, stainless steel, whatever, um, then the, the calcium harness level is 250 parts. Per million. Um, and then TDS, this should not be more than 1500 parts per million over your starting TDS, unless you have a saltwater chlorine generator. And then it will be starting plus 1500 parts per million, plus whatever the salt level is, is recommended by the manufacturer. And this could give you a level that's between maybe five and 6,000 parts per million of TDS in the and that's it. Right. So guys, there's the answer to what is perfect water. And that's a lot of the focus of Bob's training. And I think that is a very, very powerful tool as you're doing water chemistry out is really to have that targeted water chemistry, a lot different from what we learn in the field within the range water chemistry. And I think a lot of that, Bob, is, you know, we can have that range water chemistry but if you're all, all your parameters are to one side or the other, your water can still be corrosive or could still be scale forming. Absolutely. And, and I think we're, we're doing a disservice as an industry by creating a standard that you could be in the lower part of the standard and have corrosive water or be in the higher part of the standard and have scale forming water. What are we doing? You know, 
And, it, and I know it's confusing to service guys, and it must be totally frustrating and baffling for a homeowner. Because they come into the pool store saying, I'm in within range, I'm looking at it, you just tested it and confirmed it, but I still got algae in my pool or I still got scale. And that must be just, what, you know, what are they thinking? You know, so um, I created a system of targets and I think it's a whole lot easier to understand what, what's and wrong and right there. And I'm going to agree, Bob, after 15 years in the pool industry and, and just learning it in the last couple of years is, is, is really something that is, you know, really specific, really gives you target, really gives you something to aim for to really make sure that that water is balanced. Now, Bob, you've written quite a couple books in the water chemistry. What books do you have available now? And guys, what we'll do is we'll, in the comments in the section below, we'll put the links over to Amazon. But what books are available for the pool guys out there that they can buy and kind of learn all this info? Well, over the 47 years I've been in the pool industry, I've written 21 books on pool chemistry. But as far as the service text go, there's probably two books you need to own. And, and the first one is called Pool Chemistry for Residential Pools. And it is a 226 page book on everything, not everything, but almost everything I know about pool water chemistry over those years is in that book and explained just the way that I explain things to you. People tell me sometimes when they read, when they read what I wrote, it's almost like talking to me. So, uh, it's written so you can understand it. It's not a chemistry book. So um, there's that book, and it's 228 pages. It's a great resource. If you need to know something in depth and dig and deep, uh, dive deep into it, it's there. So the chemistry's there, but it's also explained. The other book is called Pool Chemistry for Service Pros. And this is a book that I wrote for professional pool service technicians. And it's only 28 pages long. It explains the method of taking care of the pools. And it doesn't tell you to do to buy anything new or to do anything different. Well, it says to do it different, but just puts it all together so that you understand the interaction of how one thing affects something else. And it puts it all together in a logical science-based way so that you can really see how the chemistry works in the pool. And once you have that understanding, it'd be a whole lot easier to take care of your pools. So those two books are a must have for you guys. And there is a third one, and I've taken the, the pool chemistry for service pros books and completely rewritten it for homework. And it's called Easy Pool Chemistry. And if you are totally a newbie, or you have a homeowner that wants to know, or you have a new hire that's never been in the pool industry, give them the Easy, easy Pool Chemistry book and it'll kind of walk them through it. It's kind of like sea spot friend. And so you go through there and it'll teach you how to do it. And then you can take a, another giant step and read the service pro book and it'll make a whole lot of sense. So um, those three books are the three books that you should own. They're available as an ebook from Amazon or a print on demand book also from Amazon. Take about two or three days to get it to you. In the print version, the ebook you can download and have it five minutes later. Right. And guys, as we mentioned before, in the section below, we'll put, place those links for those books right there. Guys, Bob joins us once a month on the Pool Nation podcast. You can search on any platform and he comes on, he answers questions with regards to water chemistry, all the questions that are sent in from the pool guys or the pool girls. He also joins us once a month on our Instagram live at Pool Nation. You can follow us there. We hope you enjoyed these videos. Bob, I want to thank you for your time. Hey, thanks for coming. We're going to do it again next month. Join Absolutely. Us. Guys, we'll catch you on the next one.